Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Guys of Magic. This is Hunter, Steven, and Shane. Say what up, guys. Hello, everybody. What's up, nerds? We are back with another Commander Grades video. That is right. We are taking a look at all the pre-con legendaries and talking about them as potential commanders. Obviously, they are commanders because they come in a pre-con. Well, at least half of them, right? Right. But, yeah. like I said, we are taking a look at the face commander, the backup commander, talking about them, giving them a grade, giving them an average grade between all three of us. So, let's start it off with this first one. It is the Miracle Worker deck. It is helmed by Amanatu, Veil Piercer. It's one white, blue, black for a 2-4 legendary creature human wizard. It says, at the beginning of your upkeep, Surveil 2. And then it says, each enchantment card in your hand has a Miracle. Its Miracle cost is equal to its mana cost, reduced by 4. It's a lot. But, Shane, you had the opportunity to go ahead and upgrade Miracle Worker using Amanatu. It's on the channel, $100 upgrade and $300 upgrade. Check the description for those videos if you wanted to see those. But, Shane, Amanatu, how do we feel? I think she's cool. I think right off the bat, I said that the top part, the surveil part, would feed perfectly into the, the Miracle, and it did. Being able to set up your Miracle is pivotal in this deck. Otherwise, you're just kind of like hoping which no one wants to do uh, but adding other things to manipulate the top of your deck like this card's good it's a little slow it's not you know anything ex super explosive but you can go blow for blow with a lot of decks and then at the end game that's when you can really take over because things you're miracling are pretty big and nasty dude so th this fun this deck was a really fun to play yeah i think it's very cool i mean like you said the built-in engine on the card of setting up the top of your deck before you draw into the miracle is fantastic we always say we want the card to do the thing this card does the thing perfectly yep and for that reason i'm a hundred percent here for it yeah it's a fantastic card i mean surveil two in a miracle deck is a must and the fact that this has it and makes your miracles basically cost four less is insane yeah, and I would also put some reanimators type style effects in this deck as well, because if you surveil them and they're not enchantments, pitch them into the grave, cast them later. Yep, 100%. I like it's that. Just, it's like a solid, like, if you're trying to do the miracle strat, this is a really good commander to look at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Reducing cost by four is insane, too. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on to the grades. This is a quick one. Shane, what do you give it out to? It's a quick one, but it's good, man. I liked her. The only reason why I'm not giving her an A is because I do think it's a little fragile, a little slow, so I'm going B. Yeah, I'll join you at a B. I actually like her enough to give her an A, so I will go A. Solid. Amanatu Veil Piercer gets the average grade of a B. The backup to Miracle Worker is the Master of Keys. It's X, white, blue, black for a 3-3 legendary enchantment creature, horror. It's got flying, and it says when it enters, put X, a plus one, plus one counters on it, and mill twice X cards. It also says each enchantment card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost, plus X out three other cards from your graveyard. And you also upgraded this exclusive on our Patreon, if you guys want to check that out. Description. What do we think of the Master of Keys, Shane? In the pre-con, I think it's pretty cool. I do, like, you mentioned in the first card that if you, you need some way to, like, play the cards out of your graveyard, this card provides it. So if you are playing with the face commander, that's cool. But as the face commander, or, like, as the commander, this card just kind of seemed like it'd be more of a combo-y style deck. I didn't build it that way because I don't really play combos. But getting access to your graveyard with like that kind of ability is nuts, dude. People kind of mention this as like an underworld breach in your command zone, which I guess I can kind of understand, but I don't play CDH. Uh, I just kind of play this as just good stuff enchantments. And even at that, it's awesome because it's a beater that can grow and then give you access to your graveyard. So you could play it super powerful and like CDH, or you could play it more casual and still have fun. I think it's very versatile. I'm... I've never been a fan of commanders that have X in their mana cost, just because I feel like if it dies once, how much are you putting into the X the second time on top of the commander tax? It's, it makes things a little harder for me. So 
I I'm not the biggest fan of this one, honestly. Yeah, I don't even think that that matters in my mind, to be honest with you. I really think that you're building this with a little bit of mill involved. And I think, in my honest opinion, man, I, th I think that you're milling yourself. So self mill here is super fantastic. And I don't even really think maybe after the first or maybe even second time you even care about putting anything into the X cost. The best part about this card is definitely the second piece of text about those escape costs because if you're playing against the mill player, this it's almost like this is the perfect deck to go against mill because being able to escape all those enchantments out of your graveyard is fantastic. And it's just, it's nothing to scoff at whatsoever. Problem with that though, is that you have to pay the escape cost equal to the mana cost. Plus you have to exile three cards. So, I mean, yes, you can Not self mill that. into that. I get that. And yes, your graveyard's basically card advantage. It's like a whole nother hand over there. But I feel like that'll add up over time. And if people have enchantment removal, you're just bummed. I mean, yeah. if they have enchantment removal, you just play it again. <laughs> yeah, I think that being being able to fill your grade up, graveyard up reliably is very important with this guy. But I think there are a lot of ways to do it, like Steven's saying. Like, there are cards that can just dump things in your graveyard. Like, play dredge card. Like, just play stuff that you'll have a full graveyard. I think the downside with him, though, at least maybe not at the super high level, but kind of where we're hanging out at, it's very one-dimensional. It cares about your graveyard. So any kind of graveyard removal and you're just kind of out of the game at that point or starting over from the beginning which sucks so i would say he's a little fragile let's go ahead and move on to the grid shane what are you giving the master of keys after saying all that i just said i still think it's a pretty solid card and i'm still gonna give it a b and i will join you at a b as well not going that high master of keys for me going to be a c which leads us to the average for the Master of Keys, a B. We've gone to the Endless Punishment deck. That's right, it's the Rakdos one helmed by Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls. It is two black red for a 4-4 legendary creature, Elder Demon. It's got flying, it's got ward, pay to life, and it says whenever an opponent loses life for the first time during each of their turns, put a plus one plus one counter on Valgavoth and draw a card. Steven, you did a $100 and $300 upgrade to this deck, also on the channel. Links in the description. What do you think of Valgavoth, Harrower of Souls? I think this is my favorite time to talk about the commanders because in this kind of video, we're talking about them as a commander of a deck, not just the commander of the precon we upgraded. And in my eyes, Valgavoth at the helm of a deck that you build your other 99 cards based on him is so much better because you get to basically build your deck almost to perfection. Obviously, that's what you're doing when you're building decks in Commander, unless you're going Mimi. But I liked the pre-con, but obviously when we do the pre-con upgrades, we don't want to remove like 45 cards. But I think being able to build this without that kind of restriction, you're going to build such a smooth, creamy deck that it is just going to make your opponents never want to play with you again. And I think that's what Valgavoth brought to the table. Because every time I wanted to throw another card in, I think I got to the point where I was I threw in like 35 cards and I was like, oh, I gotta I gotta tone it down. And I brought it back down to like maybe 20 cards to change out. It, it, it's just it, there's so many options in this kind of style deck, and I loved it so much. Yeah, I like this card a lot too. I think just the ability to it's just one little damage to an opponent on each of their turns. Just that, that one time. Just, oh, this is going to grow. I'm going to draw a card. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to draw a card. This is going to grow. Thank you. And eventually, they're going to they're gonna die from this as commander damage. This will be a huge. Mm -hmm. It could. It's kind of funny. The, the ward to me is comical, but everything else on this card is very much not comical because it's, it's extremely strong. Well, the thing about the ward is, is like if someone targets this on their turn, they lose two life. It actually triggers Valgavoth, so you at least you get the draw card before it dies. Yeah, silver lining. Silver lining. This kind of reminds me of the the Mothman, just a smidge. It's a big flyer that grows, and then hopefully you get to have it on your turn before it dies. Yep. Yeah. Let's move on to the grades. We will 
kick it off with the one that did the upgrade. Steven, what are you giving Valgaboth? Yeah, I mean, I will give it a B. Um, essentially, Valgavoth, you know, depending on how you build the deck, if you build it properly, you're drawing at least three cards, and it will be a 7-7 seven, seven by the time it comes back around to you. Uh, but that's really it. Uh, other than that, it's just a pink-style deck, and you're just kind of like hurting your opponents in that aspect. Uh, so just, you know, basically having card advantage in your command zone, at least three cards worth, it's pretty decent. So I'll stick around a B. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to go up one. I like Valgavoth a lot. It's Rakdos with card draw stapled on it. So Valgavoth for me is getting an A. Wow, I'm giving a Rakdos card an A. That's crazy. Yeah. Where are we? Well, I think it's good too. But I'm still going to stick with probably the B in my opinion. Well, there we go. Valgavoth gets the average grade of a B. And the backup to Endless Punishment, well, it's the Lord of Pain. It's three black red for a 5-5 five, five legendary creature human assassin. It's got Menace. It says your opponents can't gain life. And whenever a player casts their first spell each turn, choose another target player. The Lord of Pain deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to the chosen player. Steven, you also upgraded with this as the face commander on our Patreon as well. Link in the description again. What do you think of the Lord of Pain? It's painful. All right. Here at first, that's it. No, yeah, I mean, perfect. it's just, it's nuts, man. I mean, the menace is really cool. I do like that. But just basically taxing your opponents, their life for playing the game is pretty crazy. Uh, the only thing that I didn't really like about the deck is essentially you're just building a deck to just do stuff. It doesn't really give you kind of like a... You can build it chaos, and that's pretty much, in my opinion, really one of the only ways. You just need a lot of mana for this kind of style deck because this is going to get targeted quite a bit because nobody likes losing that much life. Because obviously as the game goes on, you're playing bigger spells, your opponents are going to be getting hit, and it's going to get destroyed easy. So, Yeah. I think it's, I think it's cool just to sit around and just ping people while they play magic <laughs> uh it's like oh, i'm gonna cast this and then someone else goes well i counter that and you're like well i gotta your counter that that damage is going to that player and then your original card that's getting countered that damage is going over there <laughs> i mean i think the meanest thing i saw put in to this deck was phyresis because mm -hmm. lord of pain is the one dealing the damage mm -hmm. so technically with phyresis dealing infect counters it it that clock is drastically dwindled. I was going to say that ends a game quickly. Yes. Talk about being an arch enemy. Jeez. This, this <laughs> commander is going to make you the arch enemy because you are kind of dictating where everyone else is getting hit, but yourself, I guess. Like, I don't know. Yep. I, your opponents can play around this to an extent. Everyone can be nice and play a very small spell first on their turn. So that could be like a way to play around this card, but yeah, I just feel like you're going to, you're going to cast this and you're going to have everyone just kind of snap their head to you and be like, all right, cool. That's where we're at now, huh? That's where we're at now. That's I mean, what we're I doing. I don't even think, man. I mean, I, I think that's the fun part is that like, once it gets to that person's turn, they're like, all right, cool. Now I can finally cast my big spell. If mm. They want to be that player. Sure. Yeah. I mean, why would you not? Oh, I guess not sure. Right. You. If you're the one that's, yeah, if this is your commander for sure. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the grade. Steven, what are you giving the Lord of Pain? I mean, just like Valgavoth, they're both very fun. Uh, I'm just going to stick with this at a B. I, too, am going to give the Lord of Pain a B. Man, this is a good cycle of cards. I'm going to give it a B as well. Okay. The Lord of Pain gets the average grade of a B. Next up is the Precon Death Toll. That's right, it's helmed by Winter Cynical Opportunist. It's two black green for a 2-5 legendary creature human warlock. It has Death Touch, and it says whenever it attacks, mill three cards. It's also got Delirium, which means at the beginning of your end step, you may exile any number of cards from your graveyard with four or more card types among them. If you do, you put a permanent card from among them onto the battlefield with a finality counter on it. We have this on the channel. David made this. Unfortunately, they are not here to talk about this card. But if you wanted to see those upgrades, in the description. Winter. 
What do you think of this card, Shane? Hunter's no joke, man. Like, it, if you can get this going quick, which you definitely can, the minute Delirium is online, ugh, it is nuts. Because you're just going to be grabbing something back, putting it on. It's like very reminiscent of other cards we talked in the past, like where you're just kind of heating something out immediately, like a Koa, a Kona, whatever. Like you're just doing something stupid that you shouldn't be doing very quickly. And the downside is like, oh, then you'd have Delirium. But in this color, you can have Delirium on turn two or three. Like you can have Delirium immediately. Yeah, and that's where I'm kind of agreeing with you. Like, if you have any kind of self mill strategy, you are chilling because this is just free. It is a free thing. You do not have to yeah. cast. You don't have to exile extra stuff, like we saw with the Master of Keys. Uh, it's it's wild. Winter is coming, <laughs> Winter and it's okay. terrifying. Yeah. And obviously, I think I've been a broken record here, but I feel like every single pre-con they've been releasing, there's this one card that cares about finality counters, and we are here again. Um, finality is not going away. I like it. And you can definitely make it go away. Which is quite ironic. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the grades. Kick us off, Shane. I, I saw it in action, and I think it's great. I'm going to give it a B. I'll give it a B. I mean, Graveyard Hate just nukes this. True. That's why I'm going to give it a C. Winter Cynical Opportunist gets the average grade of a B. And the backup to Death Toll is Rendma Creaking Nest. Three black green for a 5-5 legendary artifact creature Scarecrow. It's got minutes, it's got reach, and it says when it enters and whenever you play a card with two or more card types, each player creates a tapped 2-2 Blackbird creature token with flying. The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. That's so fun. Yeah, that just seems like a fun... Like, this could be... I wouldn't even call this a meme. This just seems like a good old just fun deck. Yeah. Card sucks. No. Oh. This is Golgari goad which is not existent until now yeah i guess you could say that it sucks even in the sense that david expressed it is kind of tough like those two types i mean there are a good amount but then you're gonna run out of them very quickly um so i think I the way you have to, I, i'm just gonna say i had to throw that in there for them but i think that this car this deck wants to care about artifact creatures and if you're playing with artifact creatures you're gonna have a banana sandwich day. I yeah, just I don't I don't like this because it gets to the point and it's the same thing with every go deck. There's you and one other person. Yeah. And you've been doing nothing but giving your opponents two two birds. Yeah, well, goad sucks in one v ones. So that's and that's what it kind of like. I mean, granted, at least each play like each player creates a tap two two. So you get that as well, but it's still like it, it comes down to where it, you have one person left and they have an army of birds. I mean, like what? Like, I mean, it just I don't know. I like this card a lot. And once again, if you guys wanted to check out the upgrade to this, David had created one and it's exclusive on our Patreon. But this is really cool. I mean, you throw a coat of arms into this deck and whoa. All the birds get pumped by each other. <laughs> yeah. And now they're goaded, and this game ends very quickly. Because every time you play something, you just play an enchantment land. You play an artifact land. Just lands make two two birds. Nuts. Yeah. It's, it's, I almost wanted to say it's chaos, but it's kind of controlled since they're goaded. So it's like controlled chaos to an extent. Let's move on to the grades. I'll kick us off. I like Renma a lot, a lot, a lot. And I think. It's something I would actually build. Um, I'm going to give this a B. I, no, uh, C. I, I like it a lot with you, Hunter. I just think that it's going to be, like I said, maybe not much a very competitive deck, but just my fun deck. I'm going to stick with the C. Renba Creaking Nest gets the average grade of a C. And moving on to the final precon of the cycle, it is Jump Scare, and that is helmed by Zamone Mystery Unraveler. It is two, 
a green and a blue for a 3-3 legendary creature human wizard. It's got landfall that says whenever a land you control enters a manifest dread if this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. Otherwise, you may turn a permanent you control face up. Yeah, so I had the opportunity to go ahead and upgrade this for the channel as well. One more time, links in the description if you want to see those upgrades. But Zimone, Mystery Unraveler, let me tell you, this is a fun, fun, fun legendary creature. And Manifest Dread is so good in my opinion. The ability to go ahead and look at two cards instead of just one and decide this one's the creature, I'm putting this on the field, this goes into the graveyard. And then if you have multiple lands, you have fetches or anything like that, you just flip it over for free and boom, flies to a Colossus. So, so dumb, dude. This card cool. is so dumb. It's yeah, Manifest Red is nuts. And I hope that we see it again. It's going to be very weird when we see it because it's, you know, probably dependent on the plane we're in. But yeah, dude, it's like a, it's, it's nuts. You're going to have something huge. You're going to flip it over. This is just a landfall deck that will go nuts. And mm -hmm. I hate it. Land matters that make big things come in essentially for free. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, here we are again. Mm -hmm. Simic. Simic doing Simic stuff? Steven, Simic doing Simic things. You didn't like yes, the last Jane. Simone, okay? And I understand that. It was a meme. This Simone, not a meme. No, this Simone is fantastic. Mm -hmm. This this precon was by far my favorite. Um, it, it's just it's insane. Manifest Red is way better than Manifest a thousand percent, and it just it takes your fetches to another level. It takes it, it's just it's a beautiful deck. It really is, and it hums. It goes very well, and it's Simic. <laughs> it's Simic. Uh, I mean, I, I just, I really can't say anything really negative about it, man. I mean, it, it really does everything you want it to do. It has protection. You can pump stuff with the green and then it's Simic. <laughs> I think we've said all we can say. Let's move on to the grades. I'll kick us off. Zamone for me is getting an A. God, I hate this. It's an A. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say A at all. Well, Zamone, Mystery Unraveler, gets the average grade of an A. And the final card that we are talking about today is the backup to Jump Scare. It's Kian, Corrupted Memory. Two, green, blue for a 2-2 legendary creature illusion. It says, as long as Kian's power is even, you may cast non-creature spells as though they had flash. And as long as Kian's power is odd, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. And... Whenever you draw a card, you put a plus one plus one counter on Kian. Yeah, so I built this deck on our Patreon. If you guys wanted to check that out, check the link in the description. But this deck is pretty cool. I love the ability to just go ahead and just fill this entire deck with just draw effects. We're going to be drawing a bunch of cards. We're going to be making this as big as possible. We're going to be doing a bunch of damage. But at the same time, if you have instant kind of draw effects, change its power to the one you want to flash in either a creature or non-creature, that's really cool. Yeah. Don't like it, huh? I mean, it's it's a cool mechanic, and I enjoy it. It's just that it's it's so much to think about. In terms and it's of just what? Like, All right, I want to do this. I got to draw a card, and then I got to play this. And then, well, if, if I play this, I might draw a card, and I got to change it back. And then, oh, well, I want it. I need that other card, too. Like it's just it's too it's just like hoop after hoop after hoop, and I'm just not a big fan of it. The mental math I'm not here for. Your mental capacity can't handle it. I get it. It's okay. No, <laughs> I mean that's why I gave the weird Zimone with the prime numbers an F. Like I no, not I don't want to think about numbers. What do you think, Shane? I do kind of like the mental math. I like the fact that you can plan turns in ahead of time, like. Unless your opponent makes you draw a card, which is not that often. You are the keeper of your own domain, Steven. So I think this card's cool. Interesting. Yeah. I'm... My domain does not contain Keon. <laughs> I am here for it. I, I like it a lot. The way I built it, too, I just, like I said, I threw a bunch of card draw effects. So just drawing cards, making this huge. We're going to swing it for commander damage pretty quickly. 
But let's go ahead and move on to the grades. I'll kick us off. I know this card in the community is not that popular, but I am here for it. It's getting a B for me. Yeah, it's not for me. It's a D. I can't go as low as a D. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a big dumb beater. So I'm going to have to give it a C. Ian, Corrupted Memory, gets the average grade of a C. And that is going to do it for us today. If you guys liked that video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already so you don't miss out on any of the cool content we're putting out. Um, yeah, that's it. That's Commander Grades for Dustmorn. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, once again, always interested to hear you guys' opinions. If you guys agreed with these grades or disagreed, comment down below. I want to hear it. We want to hear it. Talk about it. But if you wanted to check us out on our social media accounts, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, at Guys of Magic, links are in the description. On the screen right now, those are all of our Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys all so much for your added support. It really does mean the world to us. If you guys wanted to check out what they're seeing, including all those backup precon upgrades that are not here on YouTube, check the link in the description for the Patreon link and consider subscribing. And until the next video, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.